the lady that was helping me move that I hired looked at my looked at me and went, "She's a snake," and I was like, "She's fine," because I like to think the best of people. Wait, why did the anyway. lady who was helping you move say she was a snake? This is the plaintiff, Kathleen Sanders. She says she rented a room in the defendant's apartment and everything was fine until the day she got home and the lady said, get your stuff and get out. She's owed for rent and security that she paid and is suing for the $700 she's due back. This is the defendant, Robin Martin. She says the plaintiff had 10 different overnight visitors, which she told her was prohibited. Since the plaintiff broke the rule, she kicked her out and owes her nothing. She's accused of being a little too strict. All parties, please raise your right hands. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Sanders. Yes, ma'am. You rented Honor. a room in Ms. Martin's uh, apartment, I guess. And how long were you living there? I lived there from January and February totally, and then just a few days into March. And what went wrong? Honestly, I don't know. I, when I rented the room, I saw the ad. Um, it was $500 a month for rent, and then it was supposed to be $200 deposit. I'm on disability. I'm disabled. And I had told the lady, Robin, I What's said, the Robin, nature of, can, can I ask you the nature of the disability? Is it physical or mental? What's the nature of the disability? It's, it's physical. Um, okay. I am a, uh, I'm a liver transplant patient. And it, in the hospital one time I, I fell and I broke my hip. I'm doing everything an 80 year old lady does now. So she, okay. kn she knew about this and my disability check comes on the third. And I said to her, um, well, my disability check comes on the 3rd. If I move in on the 1st, can I take your, or would you feel better for, if I just moved in on the 3rd? So I moved in on the 3rd, and I paid her $700 room and, and deposit. As I'm moving yeah. my stuff in, there's still stuff in my room. She starts telling me that some of the stuff in the closet has to stay there, and I'm like, okay, whatever. The bed you're going to sell, whatever. And the lady that was helping me move that I hired looked at my looked at me and went, "She's a snake," and I was like, "She's fine," because I like to think the best of people. So wait, why did the anyway, lady who was helping you move say she was a snake because of the last minute things that of, she was saying? Yeah, the last minute things that she was kind of adding in. Now here's the thing: I have texts where I wrote, "Hey, is it all inclusive?" Does and she said, "Yes." Um, I, then we had a conversation on the phone and I said, you know, the reason why I'm leaving, why I'm leaving now is because the lady has a young, a young daughter and I want to be able to have friends come over. And is that going to be a problem? No. For January, it wasn't a problem. For February, it wasn't a problem. But I told her and she had guys over all the time. It was never a problem. So I told her that this guy had messaged me. His name is Chris. And I told her how I had known Chris. It's really, it's a crazy, weird story. Chris is my ex-boyfriend's ex-wife's ex-boyfriend. Okay, you could kind of get to the point here. Anyway, so the bottom so line anyway, is that go, this fellow stays go, over. He stays over. Um, we were up to like three o'clock in the morning. He, we, I go, come out of my room and she's freaking out. She's like, I, you, you weren't At allowed three to in go the morning. She's the, freaking out no, no, or no, no, in the no, morning. No, no. She's, it, it, in the morning, the next morning, she, we, okay. I come out of my room and she's, she's just kind of sitting on the couch, Patty. And I go, is everything okay? And she's like, um, mad at me that he spent the night that he he's 
his car was probably towed. I was like, his car wasn't towed because there's a, a website painted on the parking spots for visitors where you register your car. And she started freaking out about that. And I was like, well, we, we're going to go get something to eat. And I was hoping that she'd calm down. We come back and I go in to get my, my charger and Chris goes, where's your doorknob? And I was like, oh, I didn't even notice it. I walked out of my room and I'm kind of getting nervous now. And I just looked at her and I said, is there something wrong with my door? And she's like, you broke the rules and blah, 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 blah. You need to get out now. Ma'am, she has been having money problems from the minute I started. The day I got a job, she knew when I was going to get paid. She tried to borrow $60 from me. I told her I did not have it. I used my disability food stamps on her. She had me pay rent on the third, like I always do, cash. She took me to the ATM. And I know what you say, cash goes out hand, one, out one hand, receipt comes back in another. I went to paralegal school, like my hair. I love you, Judge Mary Young. So all of a sudden the fifth comes, or they, they pay, the seventh, that's the seventh, the next day she kicks me out after I've used all my food stamps and my all my money. I don't get a lot of deposit. Why she do you leave, mad. though? She, like, in other words, she can't kick you out. You're a renter. A landlord no, she, can't say, hey, get out, and you have to get out. Like, I you could have just and, said, yeah, make me. Well, she was getting confrontational. She actually got to a point where she okay. put her hand out. And p p touched my nose. I have a text from a friend. So you just, like, you didn't want to be there and you didn't want the confrontation. The, the police so where did you go that day? The police showed up. Did you call the police? Well, she said she was going to call the police and she didn't. We sat outside and waited for them to call the police and they didn't come. So we called them. They came and we told them what was going on. And I hear her in the background going, um, she's probably high. Look at all those pills she has in her room. You know, they're anti-rejection pills. They're vitamins. I mean, I, I was like told the police, go ahead and look at them. She's trying to paint me as something I'm not, like I'm a hussy, I'm a whatever. No, nobody that I brought into her home was a stranger to me. And I did not bring 10 guys home. I don't know 10 I have guys. two questions. I have two questions. Okay. Number one, did she ever tell you you couldn't bring anybody there? Never. Never. And number two, had you brought other people there and it hadn't been a problem? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Ms. I Martin, what's going Jack. on? I told her the day she moved in, because my apartment complex has rules and regulations. They do not allow any overnight visitors at all whatsoever. And if there is an overnight visitor, we have to go to the office and get an overnight pass for them to put in their vehicle the show that's a yellow slip of paper that they have to show that they're there overnight. Okay, she was never on my lease. I did her a favor by letting her rent a room from me. She was never on the lease, never. So, like I said, wait, how did you do in, her a favor? Stop, 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 stop. How did you do her a favor? How did you do her a favor? She was paying you rent. Okay, well, so, um, therefore, like I said, um, she rented the room out, okay? I told her to begin with, no visitors overnight. She had way more... Do you have had, that like, in writing anywhere, like an email that you might have sent her saying you can't have visitors? Because that's unusual, you see? No, I, it's unusual I to tell somebody that they can't have visitors. So if you want me to believe that that was an agreement between the two of you, I would like to see either a lease where it says that or an email where you told her that or a text where you told her that. Do you have any of that? It was verbally. I told her in person, face to face, when she moved in. Watch this. Did she ever tell you you couldn't have guests over? No, and a lot, everything I yeah, tried to that's do, what, I tried to okay. do Okay, so now go on. What did she do that caused you to throw her out? Tell me what happened. I threw her out because for one, she stole from me. When I, she moved in in January, I was out of town for two weeks and I had a bed that I was selling and I told her to sell it and, um, and bring me the money because I was out of town. She sold the bed, she lied to me. She never said she sold it. She kept the money, it was $140, she kept it. 
And then she decides to tell me the day before I'm coming home. She waited two weeks to tell me this. She decides to tell me the day before I'm coming home and says that, um, oh, well, by the way, I sold that, that bed and uh, I'll just give you the money on the third. So I was like, you know, you're stealing from me all of a sudden, you know, I, you just moved in and now all of a sudden you're stealing money from me. I was like, you know, I trusted you in my house and I trusted you, you know, to do that. And he, you go behind my back and you steal this money. So I was upset about that, you know, so I, but I forgave her and I was like, okay, you know, let's move on. And then after that, you know, she's bringing every Tom, Dick and Harry in my house. And there's like 10 different guys that she had at my place. And I'm thinking, who are all these different people that you're bringing in here? You know, oh, I'm just dating. I'm on the website and I'm trying to find somebody to date and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, okay, you know, you're making yourself look bad. You got all these Tom, Dick and Harry's, you know, coming through here. And then the last guy in March, were you, you know, jealous? Well, anyway, like, I'm not jealous. I have a boyfriend. I am far from jealous. I have one steady boyfriend and that's all I need. Okay. I don't need every Tom, Dick and Harry in, in the land, you know, to, to come by. I'm, I keep to myself. So I'm what did you person. tell her on that morning in March? What did you say to her, Ms. Martin? I told her to get out. Uh, Cause I said, I said, you, you're going behind my back. You're, um, you're breaking the rules. Uh, you have to get out. Well, you just tell her to get out just like that. You've already, you just accepted her rent on March 3rd. It's March 7th or something. And you just tell her, get out. And you give her back her money? I said, because you're breaking, I said, you're breaking the rules. You're going behind my back. You're doing stuff you should not be doing. So therefore you have to move out of my house because I cannot trust you. You've stole my money. First off, I said, um, okay, so I you returned her money, you, right? You I, returned the rent for March no, and you gave her I back her security, her right? No, no. But she broke the rules, so I said, you got to go. I said, if Okay, I'm not rules, familiar with that particular law where if you're mad at somebody because you have a rule and they break it, you get to turn them out on their heel and they have to sleep on a park money. bench. She I'm not, first of all, I don't even believe you that you had that rule with her because you can't prove it yes, at all. I did. So, yes, but I let's did. assume that you did. I don't really care. I don't believe you. But let's assume you did. Where do you come off throwing her out and then not returning her money? Throwing her out is your remedy for breaking the rule. Stealing her $700 isn't. You see, if you don't like that she lives there, you're supposed to give her 30 days notice, not tell her get out and take her doorknob off. You're breaking the rules. The rules of a month-to-month -month tenancy is that you have to give her 30 days notice, okay? Then after you break that rule, you move on and don't return any money. So you're stealing her money. If you don't want her there and you're lucky enough that she says, all right, I'm leaving right now, and the police don't say, hey, she's a tenant, you can't throw her out, go take it to court, which is what the police usually say, all right? It, but probably you didn't even want to stay. You just wanted to get out of there. It was unnerving. But whatever the reason may be, once you throw her out, what makes you think there's any rule on God's green earth that allows you to keep the rent and the deposit. She is not, she is not on the lease. So therefore, she is not supposed to then be. I, she was not on the lease. That doesn't matter. You have a landlord-tenant relationship, and you are a mere mortal like the rest of the landlords who have to give 30 days notice. But if you don't, and you're lucky enough that she just leaves, because of your tactics of taking her doorknob off and everything else you did. If you're lucky enough that she leaves, then that's your remedy for her not following the rules. You don't also get to steal her money. $700, verdict for the plaintiff, plus your court costs. She stole from me. She would never stole from me then. What about that? Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Yeah, whatever. Your poor sympathy lady, you're full of I don't owe you a dime, okay? So you can just go somewhere. Well, you're telling her go somewhere. Well, anyway, the judge has found for the plaintiff, no question about it. Ms. Martin, you just got washed out by the judge. You owe her that money. You can't keep it. Why are you shaking your head no? Because she has no say-so in Texas. You're not on the lease. You have no say-so whatsoever. Well, in this court, she has all the say-so, and she's just issued a judgment against you for $700. you got to give her her money back and the deposit. That's the law. Ms. Sanders, you're getting your money back. Okay, you're satisfied with that? I am very satisfied, and I, I when I went to... Uh... <laughs>
paralegal school, every single time I every time I could, I would preface a question. Well, you see, on the people's court, <laughs> and I <laughs> love this show. This was one of my bucket lists when I was dying, and I got my tra- right before I got my transplant. I was one of my things I said was I never made it on the people's court. <laughs> so. Well, yes, you have now. You've made it. This I is your it. day. Oh, I'm living. <laughs> I'm living. Donate your organs. Congratulations. Somebody's going to live. Congratulations. So okay. <laughs> Let's see what the judge has to say. Here she is with Judge John now, another session of After the Verdict. The thing I liked the most about this case, Marilyn, was the haircut on the plaintiff. Because <laughs> I, I, I did a little quick research and I found this. And I got to say, uh, there's a li- there's a certain oh, likeness, a certain resemblance there between the two of you. <laughs> Uh, when you're renting a room to someone, you have a month-to-month tenancy like this, you got to abide by the rules. Of course you do, Landlord even does, in Texas. I don't know what that lady's talking about. <laughs> of course you do. Right, and that includes the 30 days notice. Of course. So a uh, pretty uh, subtle way of saying um, you're not welcome here when you remove the doorknob. From. Yeah, it's outrageous. Exactly. Well, the plaintiff's uh, transplant survivor, she's gone through some health issues. She looked you great. You and I are both, she, she shouted out, Become yeah. an organ donor. Right. You and I are both organ donors. Yep. All my children are. We all have it on all of our it's on licenses. My driver's license. On our driver's license in Florida. And I got a little note on the back that says, just make damn sure I'm dead. That's <laughs> it, right? That's it. So Kent wants to know this. Hey Harvey, People's Court is an American institution. Why do you think it's been around for so long? Well, I need a job. <laughs> no, look, the, the real reason is that the People's Court, I think, is fun to watch. It's, you know, litigants can be characters, judges great. She also learned something. And I think people want to take away something from the television they watch. And over time, people have learned a lot about the law and a lot about how to resolve disputes. Because if you've seen what's happened in this country over the last eight months, it's all about dispute resolution. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff Ursel Taylor. She says the defendant is her brother. And when he needed a place to stay, she let him move in with her. While the guy brought bedbugs with him. Yuck. She had to hire an exterminator. And they found almost 100 bedbugs in her brother's bedroom and 50 in hers. Unfortunately, she had to throw her brother out and is now suing him for $1,000 in exterminating fees. Plus, pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Lloyd Taylor. He says his sister lives in a four-unit building, so the bedbugs could have come in from anywhere, and he doesn't understand why he's the one being blamed. His sister needs the money as his guess, so she's coming after him. He's her brother, for goodness sakes. Bottom line, he didn't bring any bugs into her place, and she shouldn't be coming after him in court for something he didn't do. He's accused of bugging out a sister. All parties, please use right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she helped her brother out in the time of need, let him move in with her, and guess what? He brought some guests. Bed bugs. Yuck. And the defendant says that his sister could have gotten bed bugs anywhere since she lives in a building with other tenants. It's the case of bugging out your sister. (laughs) Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Taylor. You decide one day that you're going to help your brother out, and what is it you do for him? Well, it's not the point of I helping out. He was being evicted from a nursing home in Muscatine, Iowa, and had no place to go. Why was he being evicted? Oh, I think there was various things that he did, but he thinks it was racially motivated. But in the event of all that, he didn't have anywhere to go, so wouldn't nobody else. So what did in my you do? Family take me. Nobody else in the family wa- wanted to be bothered with him, so I drove down and picked him up. So then you bring him to your home, and were you charging him rent? No. Was he was he grateful? Uh, that's hard to say, He's... Judge. I mean, mm, I don't. I can't. Re- it shouldn't be he hard. Act like he was. Yeah. I mean, he act like he was, but then he would do things that would go against what I asked him not to do, so. Okay. 
All right, yeah. so what happens? He moves in in February, and according to you, there are bed bugs that you notice in what month? Uh, I believe it was like latter part of May because I actually okay. thought it was mosquitoes that was eating me up. I was getting bit like crazy. And then he tells me, well, he finds bed bugs. Mr. Taylor, <laughs> Mi Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor, I know you're in your house, but could you refrain from smoking during court? Thank you. Okay, Your Honor. Go Sorry. ahead. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. Taylor. So I'm wondering, so I order a mosquito suit. I order all kinds of- A mosquito of, suit? Get all, yeah, to cover me from head to toe. So when I go outside, I don't get ate up. Like what? Like this kind of thing? It, like that, this? That's it, right there. But I mean, that didn't stop me from getting bit up. So then okay. he said, I found, he showed me, I never seen a bed bug. I've been into this apartment well over 10 years. Never had any problems with that. So he showed me a bed bug. I said, ugh. And, but he went, wasn't getting bit. I was the only one getting ate up. I couldn't okay. get out. Where was the bed bug that he showed you? Where was it? In his bedroom. Okay. And then did you look for bed bugs in your bedroom? No, I didn't. All right. Did you I call mean, an exterminator? Did... Yeah, I did call ex... finally call an exterminator in June. How do you and... wait another month? If you're getting bitten up alive like that, why didn't you call the exterminator right away? He was going to pay for it. So, I mean, like, you know, you got to wait till he gets his check the third of the month. Okay. So you call the exterminator, and the exterminator comes, and in fact, it was bed bugs, right? Oh, definitely, yes. He told me that, according to his first initial visit, that there was 100 to 150 bed bugs found in Lloyd's room alone. Oh, my goodness. And then how many and were in your were room? 40 to 50. Okay. So they treat it, and Lloyd pays for that treatment. And that first treatment yeah. is how much? $400. They gave him $20 off because he's a senior citizen. <laughs> so how much did he pay? $380. OK. Mr. Taylor, where do the bed bugs come from? How you doing, y'all? I'm a big fan. OK. Thank you. You, 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 look, you look at the complex, complex of this case. Number one, bed bugs came from anywhere. If I had bed bugs, you think I'd brought them there? I don't sleep in filth. She can testify. I'm not a filthy person. And number two, I came there in February, and, they, and all of a sudden they show up in May. Why they been on vacation? Come on now. There's no Wait, evidence of You're talking about the bed. Anything. You showed up in February, and the bed bugs don't show up until May. So they're on vacation. So you couldn't have brought them from the nursing home, which is what you oh, had no. thought might have happened. But. Mr. No, Taylor, why no. did you pay for the first treatment if you don't feel like you're responsible for bringing the bed bugs in? Number one, my sister still love her. Number two, she let me stay there for nothing. I think it's the least I could do. I'm not unreasonable. It is the very, very, very least you could do. So your sister is the only person in the family who lets you stay there for free. I presume you and your sister had a pretty good relationship. I appreciate it without a doubt. Why is it that you and your sister aren't living together anymore? Because, what number happened? one, I moved out on my own. Number two, I got tired of where I was staying. I got tired of Wisconsin. I'm back in Rockville, Illinois. This is my home. Okay. Ms. Taylor, why is it that he wasn't living with you anymore? According to you, you had to throw him out. Well, I figured, I mean, he was doing stuff that kind of irked me. But see, Lloyd is, he's a man that, he want to do things his way, regardless of things, what you want to happen in your home. And I just figured, I mean, you're disrespecting me. Okay. I mean, I can see if you was paying me something, then maybe you have a right to say what you can and what you won't do. But as long as you're not paying anything and I'm paying the cost to be the boss, I expect things to go my way. <laughs> paying the cost? I am going to quote you, and I'm not even going to credit you. Paying the cost to be the boss. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Ms. That's Taylor, right. you. so according to you, you tell him he's got to go, and then right. you 
tell him he has to keep paying for the bed bugs extermination because there's a monthly extermination until they're going to come back every month and spray again, and it's another $90 until all the bed bugs are gone. All right, now, I saw the report from the exterminator that says that there were twice as many bed bugs in his room than in your room. But I also right. understand that this is an apartment that's part of a fourplex. Bed right. bugs are a very pernicious little thing. Only the bed bugs know where they came from, and the bed bugs ain't talking. That's how it always is. <laughs> So I could understand if he came from the nursing home and the next day you find bed bugs. But we're talking right. about a pretty long stretch of time. You have to have, these cases are very hard to prove already, but you have to have something really specific, like someone moves in and the next day they're all over. Um, and that's not what we have here. So we really don't know who brought them from where. And I cannot order him to pay for the remaining costs of taking care of the bed bugs. Now, Mr. Taylor, having said that, if I were you, I wouldn't be smiling because you're running out of people who care about you and who want to take help to take care of you. And the day is going to come when you are going to need love and family. So you think about whether or not you have anything to be grateful for to Miss Taylor for being there for you the way she was. But that's between you and her. It's not a matter of the law, and I'm not ordering him to pay it. Okay, good luck. <laughs> well, what do you think, Mr. Taylor? The judge made a just decision because the case was, the case had no evidence. All right. Well, listen, up. are you going to still get along with her? How do you feel about that? She the one going to hold a grudge. It, it takes it takes two to tango. All right, good luck to you. Miss Miss Taylor. How about now? Are they all gone, do you think? I know they've been exterminating over time, but are they are they gone? No. Nope. You still be, you still I, being bitten? Well, I'm not home right now, so I've been gone for two weeks. But, yes, I had been getting bitten, and I was finally able to move back into my bedroom. I had been sleeping on the sofa for the last couple of months. All right. Well, listen, I hope you work it out with your brother, okay? Keep in touch with him. That'll conclude the case here now, another session of After the Verdict. You called these bed bugs a pernicious pest, and it sure looks that way. You, your heart's got to go out to the plaintiff oh, for having to deal I mean, with this. I don't this know, you wake up and house. you're bit. Those kind of skin itches are horrible. You remember when you, oh, yeah. when you, know, you uh, rescued those kittens? And <laughs> yes, in fact, this is back in the late 80s. I, I found a litter of kittens in an abandoned building. And I brought them home, and before I could adopt them out, I took them to the vet a couple That's times. That's actually when I met you. Right. Anyway, we go to the vet. I go to the vet one day with them, and the vet is treating them, and he sees me scratching my arms like this <laughs> in the room. And he goes, hey, hey, come on over here a second. And I said, sure. And I walk over. He takes a scalpel, and he scrapes my forearm with the scalpel. And he takes a little glass slide, and he puts the, the scalpel on the slide, and he bends over a microscope. He doesn't say anything for a minute, and then he says, I think you should have a look at this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh no. I look in the microscope and there's this eight legged crab like thing, little monster on there. And I pull my head away and he goes, Those are all over your arms right now. They're microscopic. And, and they're what from was your it? wrist to your elbow. Scabies. Oh my goodness. He said, You got them from these cats. So he gave me some cream for I don't it. remember the mange part. I just remember the, the, the saving the cats part. Isn't right. that great? Yeah. Isn't love brand? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank God I didn't give you any of that stuff. Exactly. <laughs> So Deirdre wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, my neighbor has a new dog that attacks the fence between our yards because he's trying to get to my dog. The fence is now damaged. Should I sue my neighbor? Well, here's the thing. If his dog damaged your fence, you should go to him and say, fair is fair, and the law is the law, and you have to fix it because your dog did it and you didn't control your dog. And if that doesn't happen, you can go to small claims court. Now, we'll do it for this case. Litigants for the next case inside the courtroom. This is the plaintiff, Michaela Marie Sweet. She says she purchased an Apple TV device from the defendant, but never received it in the mail. She's tired of all the defendant's lame excuses and is suing for the $130.98. She's cold. This is the defendant, Jade Alexander Kelly. She says she shipped the Apple TV to the address the plaintiff provided. She never got it back in the mail and has no idea what the plaintiff did with the thing and owes nothing. 
She's accused of not completing a sale. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she purchased an Apple TV from the defendant, but guess what? She never received it. The defendant says she sent it in the mail to the address she was given and is not returning any money. It's the case of, I'm not mailing it in. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. Okay, Ms. Sweet, you are suing Ms. Kelly because you purchased uh, an Apple TV box from her and you never got it, right? Yes, Your Honor. Tell me what happened. I had asked her via Facebook if I could, she could ship me um, this Apple TV device, and she said she would, and asked to ship to Mass. But was it w and was it for sale on on Facebook Marketplace or something? Yes. Like you saw it for sale? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, we agreed that she would ship it, and she gave me the total cost, the seven dollars shipping fee, and the cost of the item. And uh, I gave her my address. Of course, autocorrect said AM but it was really just M.A. I just did that. And I never got it. And Massachusetts? I kept asking her over, yes. I kept asking her over and time. It auto-corrected to A.M.? Because when I do M.A., sometimes the um, it doesn't recognize it, and it just says A.M. like the radio okay. station. Okay. And um, I shipped it. I asked her to ship it, and time went by, and I... She, I asked her for like a lease of tracking number. I have a question. Stop a second. How is it that you gave her your address? Through text? Through Facebook Marketplace, how? Um, through Messenger on Facebook. Okay, so go on. So I had asked her to ship it, and she said she did, and I asked her for at least a tracking number because a week went by, and her I called her post office, and they said without any proof that she sent it, a week they couldn't help me. And after some time, I went through PayPal to try to get my money back, and they told me because she had taken the money out of her account and that she had already use the money, they couldn't help me. That's silly. I don't know why they would say that to you. Did you miss the deadline for doing it or something? I guess because it was friends and family and it wasn't services, goods and services. Ah, uh, yeah. And they don't guarantee okay, friends so and family. Okay, so Ms. Kelly, what happened here? What happened here? So she wanted the 4K TV device from me and I offered Why were you to selling it? Because my husband was murdered last year, leaving me with two small kids, and I started selling I'm stuff so, sorry. so that I could. Thank you. And I started selling some things that I didn't need anymore to try and make money to take care of them. And one of those things was that device. Can I ask you, how, how was he murdered? How did that happen? Basically, there was a deal with a family member and one of her friends that went down the wrong way and an altercation ensued. And at the end of it was his homicide. Was anybody charged? Um, it's still being investigated. Do you know who the people are? Yeah. It's, one of them was a family member and the other was her friend. A family member of his or of yours? Um, it was an in-law of his. Okay. Um, how old are your kids? At the time, they were one and three. Now they're three and four. Oh, okay. So, so you're selling ask, the 4K. Right. For $130. And, well, for what I had asked for plus the shipping fee. And I told her $130. I went to a store with my best friend. And as I was getting out of the car, I heard my phone ding. And I said to her, see if that's her. Tell her to send the address. Well, I guess she sent the address. And like she said, the address was incorrect. And Okay. What state is AM? <laughs> I don't know, but I didn't look at it. When I went back to look at the address, I just hit search conversation. And you actually did look at it because you sent her a text saying you wrote AM, but you told me you were from Massachusetts. You meant MA, right? You texted her that because no, I read that it. was my so friend you... texting her. Right. And she your friend tell, tells you Massachusetts. She didn't relay the message to me. No, she didn't relay the message to me. Oh, come so on. Come when on. I sent it. Come on, Ms. Kelly. I just How, typed in what are the, she? You just thought it was AM? You thought there was a state called AM. How did you mail it? By mail. And what vehicle did you use? At U.S. The post Postal office. Service at the post office? No, at the post office. Do you have a tracking office. number? They weighed on a little. Do you have a I tracking number? This happened so long ago that. Well, did you have a tracking number when you mailed it? When I mailed it at the time. So why didn't you just give her the tracking number when she asked you for it? Because at the time I was going through a lot of things when she kept asking me for it. And then at, after that, I was in the hospital. 
And what I were told you in her the hospital I was for? I'm willing. so sorry. What were you in the hospital for? I had a placental abruption. I was pregnant, and I had a placental abruption, and I ended up having my baby nine weeks early. Oh goodness. Okay. This. Yeah. It, that's not with the victim of the homicide. That's Pat. That's after. It that. was a completely set. Yeah. No. It was right, a separate right, right. situation. Okay, okay, okay. But it okay. went on for so long because she wait she'd wait a while to message me and then I was in the hospital and I told her look I'm in the hospital I don't I don't have time to deal with this right listen, now listen I, I hear the things you're on. saying and I'm sorry for the stuff that you've gone through but I don't see how you um get around paying this lady her money back because in a million years I'm looking at these texts and these texts are with you okay you were, let me call for the shipping amount uh, so it's not too bad. It's $127 to ship to Massachusetts, yada, yada, yada. So, so you know it's Massachusetts. Why then should I believe that you mailed it to a state called AM and it's gone forever and it's her fault from a typo that you caught right away? Um, so it's just silly. If you or your agent knows it's Massachusetts, write Massachusetts. But here's the thing. Let's assume you had written AM. If you put the correct zip code, it was going to get to her anyway. And it didn't get to her. So it I would either get to, get to her or, it, oh, I know it didn't. I know it didn't. Or it would get back to you. So one of two things happened, okay? It got lost in the mail or... You never even mailed it, and you sold it to someone else. Those are the only two things that could happen. But either way, I know it didn't get to her because you can't provide proof that it got to her. If anything, the proof you are attempting to provide is that it could never have gotten to her because after knowing the correct state, you wrote AM anyway. It's just silly. I mean, you got to pay her. So my verdict is for the plaintiff in this case in the amount of $130.98. Sweet. So the plaintiff prevails. She's going to get the $130 back. Miss Kelly, the defendant, let me talk to you. You heard the judge, and she outlined all the possibilities here. She's convinced you didn't send it, or you sent it to the wrong place. What do you think? What's your answer? I mean, it is what it is. It went out. It was in the beginning of coronavirus, and it never made it back to me. She's claiming it never made it to her, so... All right. Listen, I'm sorry about that, but uh, you're going to have to give her the $130. That's the judge's decision. All right. Let's talk to Ms. Sweet now. Ms. Sweet, you've been trying to get this for some time. Have you gotten, you didn't buy it anywhere else, did you? You're still waiting for it? Um, no, I ended up going through another person on Facebook and she gave me the tracking number within five minutes of me purchasing it. I, I, I wanted it and I couldn't wait any longer. So you did get it. All right. Well, I'm sorry you had the problem with it, but you did the right thing by filing a lawsuit. All right. We appreciate it. Good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see what the judges think about this now. Here's another session of After the Verdict. Hearing the testimony in this case, it occurred to me there's a lot of things that we're not 100% certain about in life. We don't know if alien visitors have really come to the, this world before. We don't know if Elvis is really dead or alive, but we really know for certain she never sent the <laughs> Apple TV <clears throat> to the plaintiff, right? I kind of feel that way. I gotta be honest with you, I really do feel that way. Like she just never, never, never sent it. And when you have a party to a lawsuit who, I mean, I mean, God bless her, she may have had some tragedies in her life, but when the lead in to the complaint or the answer is all about those personal tragedies, that's kind of a tell that maybe there's not a good defense or not a good claim. Right. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, and that it might be a, a plea to sympathy. I mean, she has had a tough time, but frankly, right. it was more years ago than I thought it was. Yeah. Um, she's selling stuff a couple years after, so I don't think it had anything to do with the case. No. Yeah. So Carmela wants to know this. Hey, Harvey, uh, do you have any idea how many cases the People's Court has adjudicated over its history? By the way, that's 36 years of People's Court, and I do. Uh, the total number is 16,860 cases. That is 12 years for Judge Watner and 24 years for the current show. Um, by the way, we have done 6,236 shows. I'm exhausted. We'll see you next time.